Good morning everyone, how are you doing? This is Amanda, I hope that you're well. So today is the 9th of April 2022 and I'm popping back on just to show you that I'm all I'm alive and well. Um, haven't been online for a couple of weeks and indeed I'm not going to be back to full power for um, a little while yet but I will be doing the odd video. Um, in particular those of you that follow me on Instagram and Facebook where in the past I had been doing pretty much daily videos, um, they're still maybe at least a week away, okay? So I'm gonna give myself some time just to get my strength back, um, which is something I would like to explain in this video. Um, this video is also going to look at my experience over the last two weeks after I came down with uh, COVID. Um, and it's going to be less video in terms of this is what I did. Um, it's more observations and reflections on my experience, as well as some big themes. I can feel it in my throat. Big themes that were coming up and still are coming up in relation to this but more that COVID has been the vehicle through which I was able to, it's like it gave me a key to be able to unlock some of the stories that I was still carrying, um, some of the fears that I was still carrying, but equally some of the breakthroughs that needed to happen. It's very interesting to me that I came down with it um, pretty much, I, I probably was actually, I probably had it but didn't realise I had it on the day that I went to the solicitors to um, get my will sorted uh, and um, I didn't realise I was coming down with it but I probably would have been coming down with it then. So on the day First time in my life, this life anyway, this incarnation, I bite the bullet and I sit down with a solicitor and I discuss my will and my death and, um, you know, what, what will happen effectively to my children, which even though one of them is 20 in a couple of weeks' time, they're always still your children in the same way that I am still my mother and father's child and they're in their 70s and 80s. Um, it brought up a lot of fear in terms of um, what will happen to them when I'm gone, you know. So, and any parent understands that. So that was the first interesting piece of symbology associated with coming down with this. Um, the other thing that seemed to um, move through the whole experience was that I initially thought that I had food poisoning and I'm still on the fence in terms of whether I did or whether I didn't. I have been saying for a long time that whatever subject we discuss and whatever experience we have in life, increasingly we are going to be understanding that they are multi-dimensional experiences, multi-dimensional circumstances multi-dimensional relationships, including the one we have with ourself. And it's as though we're able to see the layers much more easily now. So on one level, yeah, you just came down with, with it. You dodged it for two years. I, I hadn't had it in two years, which I think is pretty good going. Um, so, you know, there was a bit of me that was giving myself a pat on the back for having dodged it for two years. Not a bad innings. Um, but then when I came down with it, there was this other energy which was linked into diet in particular, diet. And on the day that I went to have my do the will, we drove through some countryside. And in the countryside, there were some newborn lambs. And it was the first of the newborn lambs that I'd seen this year. Um, I used to live up in Yorkshire and in fact my house used to back onto fields and I always remember seeing the lambs, you know, one day you would open your curtains and the lambs would be there. 
And then, of course, there was also, you know, a few months later, you would draw back the curtains and they'd all gone. And it's like, oh, OK, they've gone. Anyway, so on the on the road to the solicitor, I see the newborn lambs and we have Easter next week, don't we? And in my part of the world, and certainly I grew up with the tradition that you would have roast lamb on Easter Sunday, on Easter Sunday. That's what we did. That's what a lot of people still do. Again, I'm not judging it. It's just part of the tradition, part of the culture. So I see the newborn lambs and I'm thinking about Easter Sunday lunch and I'm thinking, yeah, but I really don't want to cook lamb. And in fact, most people in my family wouldn't eat it anyway. I've got a couple of vegetarians in the family. My husband doesn't eat red meat. I very rarely eat red meat these days. And when I do, I usually pay for it. It doesn't react well with me. So I'm moving off that more towards a plant-based diet. But anyway, I'm seeing the lambs in the field. And it's just going through my mind, this whole, this whole um, conundrum that we have as a species um, in terms of do we eat meat, should we eat meat or not. Um, then we go out to dinner after we've been to the solicitor and I choose chicken. And I bit into the chicken and the first two mouthfuls tasted disgusting to me. They tasted off, and but we were in a good restaurant and I'd had some wine. So I thought, well, maybe it's the wine that's changed my palate. Maybe you're tired, maybe you're just hungry. I'm sure it's fine. So I kept on eating this chicken and then it started to taste absolutely fine. It was literally the first two mouthfuls that were odd. So I thought no more of it. Came back home and that night it started terrible cramping, headache, feeling as though I was going to be sick but wasn't sick and that went on for a couple of days and I just assumed it was food poisoning. But then as it kept, well, couldn't get rid of it, after a couple of days I thought I will just take a test because I have got a headache and that's one of the signs and I'm feeling off colour and I'm feeling tired and that's when it showed up that actually you have got COVID. So as I say, there was like a multi-dimensional layer to it. On one hand, there was something about eating meat and it having not agreed with me or having been off. But in addition to what I've been thinking on the way to the restaurant about, is it actually OK to be even eating the meat anyway? Again, I could see the signs that I was being given. Um, now, the contentious thing with regard to animal sacrifice is and it's contentious because I am somebody that has a great respect for anybody's belief. I like to say a lot that I'm non-denominational. So I grew up as a Christian. I have many different beliefs now that the traditional church wouldn't probably approve of or agree with, um, including maybe even working with Archangel Metatron. But that's for another day. But, you know, um, we know that there are many traditions and cultures around the world and in different belief systems that we might not completely understand. So I've been working with the goddess Kali and feeling her energy very strongly around me because even the day before I'd gone to have my will done, I'd been very heavily immersed in Kali's energy. And Kali is about lots of things, but one of the things is death, rebirth and transformation. It's all linked. It's all multidimensional. Anyway, after this experience with the chicken, I got this message from Carly. And what she said to me was that she wanted an end to the sacrifice of animals that was done in her name. Now, when I heard this, I thought, really? It are the people that do this? Um, because I don't know, you know, it certainly doesn't happen in my street or anywhere that I've ever been. Um, so I felt a bit ignorant. So I researched it. I looked up on Google. I had a good look. And it does appear that in parts of the world, um, certain societies, yes, this practice does still happen. Not just chickens. It can be goats. It can be buffalo. Um, animal sacrifice to appease the gods is still ongoing in certain parts of the world. Now, Kali's energy is... I'm going to do a whole other video on Kali at some point soon because we're bringing out a spray. This is the whole thing. Um, 
and I'm not going to dodge the side of her that is um, bloodthirsty. She was said to be the um, being that, that is able to slay demons. So on the bat battlefield, she had this uh, bloodlust for slaying the demons. And it was Shiva who actually helped moderate her behaviour. This is all for another day, OK? But this is why, I, I, my limited understanding, why in certain parts of the world, animal sacrifice is still done to a degree. Hopefully not to a huge degree, but to a degree. Hasn't been completely stamped out yet. And this is what she said. She said, I don't want that. I never did want that. So I'm passing that message on with respect to any Hindu that watches me. I'd be very interested in what you have to say. I don't think probably there are people watching me that do that. But you may know of it within parts of certain countries. I don't know. But from what I have read online, um, it is still going on. It also took me back to the early days of the pandemic, end of 2019, beginning of 2020, when one of the first pieces of guidance is that I got from Archangel Metatron in terms of the teaching and the learning that we as a species needed to understand that this pandemic was helping to bring in for us was about animal welfare. Um, I'll try and link the video for those of you that are interested that didn't see it two years ago. Because what we were trying to do two years ago was trying to work out the origin of the, the, the C virus. Um, was it man-made in a lab? Did it come from animals? There was the whole discussion about the wet markets. And I said at the time, I said, it's weird. I'm getting it's both. It's both. And it made no sense that it's both. But actually, two years on, it was starting to make a lot of sense that it is actually both because it's a multidimensional. Uh, it's a multidimensional story. Let's just put it that way. But certainly we were meant to be looking at animal welfare. We were meant to be looking at things like wet markets and whether that is still OK in the 21st century roll forward two years and me dipping my toes into the gar the Kali energy. And one of the first things she says to me is about animal sacrifice. And I'm like, what? I didn't even know, I didn't realize it was happening. And she's saying, pass the message on. And I'm like, well, why me? Why do you want me to say it? You know, I'm not, I, I'm not of the faith. I don't understand. And she says, that's why you're being chosen to say it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's why you're being chosen to say it. So I'm passing it on. Um, but equally, this thing about a more plant based diet for me, I'm not lecturing anybody that you have to stop eating meat. Um, it would be the last thing that I would actually do because I believe in freedom of choice and I'm not a vegetarian. OK, I'd be a complete hypocrite to be coming on here telling you what to do when I still do eat white meat um, and I still might continue to eat white meat. And I'm not going to be criticised for that. Because if you want to criticise, you can just leave. OK, I'm not. I'm just sick of all the bullshit, really, now, with regards to this whole social media world. I'm just telling you my guidance that I'm being asked to bring through. And I'm being truthful and honest. And if you don't like it, you don't have to watch. Um, but for me, definitely, and for many of you, I know, there is this pull towards a more plant-based diet. So even in the midst of my um, COVID experience, that is what's coming through. It's like you ate the chicken. It's made you unwell. And my gut feeling on it was that it lowered my immune system because where I am in the UK, um, the when I came down with it, the statistics are that one in 13 people have got it at the moment in the country. It's actually probably a lot higher than that. And in certain parts of the southwest where I am, they're saying it might even be one in 10. Again, being honest, my um, illness and my daughter also got it at the same time. We didn't we're not in the we're not in the statistics. We didn't tell anybody. I mean, I'm telling you, but I didn't officially record it. I didn't feel I needed to. 
I, I, that's it, that's a whole other discussion, okay? But the point I'm making is one in 13, maybe one in 10 have got it or had it a couple of weeks ago in the UK. So it's highly likely that I was gonna come into contact with it or others were gonna come into contact with it. I know so many people have had it. Um, but yeah, for me, one of the things that was coming through was about diet. Um, so that is something to consider. There is a beautiful book that I've given a shout out to before by a lady called Josephine Moon, and it's called Buddhism for Meat Eaters, and it's very violet pill. It's very non-judgmental. It's for people that are maybe inquisitive and wanting to have a more plant-based diet, but might be struggling. Um, it's almost like a bridge. It's a bridge between the two. But it's not pointing the fingers at anybody and saying that you're doing anything wrong. Also, I've just opened it on page 108 if you've got the book. And it's interesting because the point she makes a lot of the time is that when we point the finger at other people and say you're doing something that's wrong, um, it's the thing with Jesus. It's like those who are without sin cast the first stone. Because on page 108, I've just opened it and it says this, it says, if you're a smoker, okay, so if you're a smoker, cigarette butts contain plastics in the filters and they never break down. In 2018, it was again widely reported that new studies found that cigarette butts were actually the biggest source of pollutants in the ocean. Um, I'm not a smoker, so I don't claim to know how difficult or otherwise it might be to give up the habit. Um, so if you're a smoker, I'm just going to leave this here for you to mindfully work out how you can best help the earth when it comes to your butts. Whether it's plastic bags, coffee cups or cigarette butts, it's clear that they're all very, very hard. Um, if your focus is more on animals than on the environment, you might be wondering what this has to do with helping the world's creatures. The answer is that everything is connected. All that plastic ends up in our ocean and kills our turtles, dolphins, bird life, fish, octopuses and whales. Um, if you can't give up meat, you can certainly give up plastic. Uh, it's just a brilliant book because she, what I'm feeling from it is, is this thing of like, there's no get out clause for anybody. We all have to take responsibility. Um, there's, there's a thing, isn't there, that it's like, well, the virtue signaling that, you know, well, I don't do this anymore. Well, great, you don't do that anymore. But actually, you're probably doing something else that's equally damaging or is, you know, not good for the environment or the planet or etc. Good book. Recommend it. Right. Let's move off this subject and on to something else. Um, some of the things that I was feeling with regards to taking time off. Um, oh, the other thing that was interesting about when I came down with it was, um, OK, so it's also linked into Carly. It's linked into facing our mortality and our death and what we leave behind, including our legacy and our work. Well, what happens to all these bottles? <laughs> what happens to your staff? What happens to everything you've built up? Does it all just turn to ash and it gets forgotten? If that's the case, maybe that's all right. Or do you want to leave something more permanent? All of that stuff was coming up. But the other thing was, I came down with it the day before Mother's Day. The day before Mother's Day. The symbolism of that is just so perfect, really, because the biggest gift was that it gave me time. It gave me time. It gave me time off. It gave me permission to actually be unwell. If I'm perfectly honest with you, when I actually discovered that I had it, there was almost this sense of, and that's just sound a bit triggering for some people, but I'm just going to be honest. It was almost like a sense of relief. It was like, oh, okay, thank God, let's just get this over with, shall we? Because one in 10 people, one in 13 people having it out there, it's like I knew that I was going to get it at some point. So it's like, let's just get this over with, shall we? Let's just get it over with. There was no part of my psyche that was at all frightened or worried that I was going to end up, you know, dead or anything. <laughs> and I have to say that, thank you, I noticed the evolution in this community as well. Um, particularly people, I'm not talking about my core supporters, but I'm talking about maybe people that just dip in from time to time. Um, I, I couldn't believe that the comments that came in were so beautiful. There wasn't one single comment 
on any of my social media pages that was linked into, oh, well, you would have it, wouldn't you? Because you haven't had the jab, you know? Mm -hmm. Two years ago, I guarantee that if I had come down with it, that is exactly what would have been said. Oh, well, of course you've, you've got it because you haven't had the jab. Go and get the jab. You know, don't be so, all of that. None of that at all. And I take that as a really positive sign because number one, I know there are people that watch me that absolutely have had all of their jabs. No judgment. If you want to do that, freedom of choice is what I've always said. Um, thank you for not saying it because it didn't even need to be said. But equally, um, I appreciated that it wasn't said. But the other thing was, I also think there's just this understanding now that is seeping in to most parts of the world, which is that you can get it whether you've had it or you haven't had it, okay? Um, and indeed, most of the people I know that had it at the same time as me are people that did actually have the you-know-what. But anyway, I appreciated that the whole discussion about the jab didn't even come into it. It was just like, get well soon, Amanda. That's beautiful. It's really lovely. It also was quite interesting that when I came down with it, there was another YouTuber who also came down with it at the same time as me. Somebody that I don't watch all the time, but I had actually seen one of their most recent videos because... Uh, it was quite funny, they they were putting on their makeup, and you know me, I love my makeup, and they were just putting their makeup on, and it caught my eye, and I thought, oh, I'm going to watch that. And uh, I was putting my makeup on, watching them putting their makeup on, and I was thinking, I, I might do a video on this, I might set up another little channel, just on cooking vegetarian food, maybe, you know, putting on my makeup, just daily life, it's just, I think it's it's what I'm interested in with other people, so maybe you might be interested in my stuff. Anyway, this person came down with it, I think pretty much the same day I did. And I just, you know, sent them love and, you know, didn't, didn't put anything publicly, but I just sent them love. I thought, oh, I hope you're going to be okay. But it was so interesting, the difference in the uh, reaction that this person got. And it was all about the jab. It was all about, well, thank God you've had the jab because you're not going to end up in hospital. Thank goodness. Well, thank goodness. And I was like, whoa. Whoa, it was just, it was just, I was just observing the difference in the communities. So this community, I just think rocks because it's like we've got a real mishmash of everybody. Some have had it, some haven't, but we're all, it's like this thing, like we're all in it together now, you know, and it's just, it's got down to the base level, which is just like, I wish you health. And this doesn't have to come into the discussion. It was great. Um... Also give a shout out here to Mark Bayaski, who I've given a shout out to before. Mark sent me, and I'm gonna give him a shout out also because the thing about Mark is he doesn't expect you to give him a shout out. And when you're on social media, you get sent a lot of stuff by all sorts of people, not usually other YouTubers, but you get sent a lot of stuff. And I can always read the energy behind, is it actually a gift? Or is it actually that you just want me to give a shout out to your product? There's none of that energy in with Mark. And he just sent me a box. He's given he sent me two boxes in the last year. This was just a box of stuff to help get me well. And I so appreciated it. So thank you, Mark. He sent me some beautiful incense. He sent me some beautiful oils. Um, he does oils. So yeah, he here are a couple of his oils. This one was called Golden Heart. This one's called Sacred. I think I was using another one of his oils, which is called Cleansing. And he told me to um, put it on my back because I was getting a lot of aches. The aches that you get with this particular strain of COVID are quite nasty, actually. That was the, one of the main things that I found really uncomfortable. And I did have to take tablets to get rid of it uh, every day. Um, although I tried not to because I'm not into tablets. But the point was I put some of the oil on my shoulder blades and it did help to ease it. And it was interesting because the pain for me, the muscle pain, was very centred around my shoulder blades. And as wacky as this sounds, I was thinking, that's exactly where your angel wings are. I can feel it now. You know, if I was doing an angel course now, and we might do a meditation, I probably have done one of these online, which is like unfurling your wings. 
we all have wings. They are etheric wings. Just because they're not physical in terms of the nail on my finger and the hair on my head, there's still a part of my body that is etheric. The aura, the Merkaba wings are just as real. But they stretch out from your shoulder blades and it was like a real attack on my shoulder blades. And it was like, whoa, this is something that's actually trying to clip my wings. It's trying to take my wings. It's like, you're not taking my wings. So um, anyway, I just, it went eventually, but it was just, that was just an interesting observation as well. But the other thing that Mark sent me, and I will just show you this, is he sells beautiful crystals. And um, this one, I had never heard of this crystal before. So if I, if I just put it up to the... Um, camera hopefully the camera is um not going out of focus this is called chrome chalcedony chrome chalcedony now whether the camera is picking up or not on this particular stone there's three i mean they're all completely unique but my stone has got three very deep dark pools is what it looks like of emerald green and it remind it it just really spoke to me now the also the other thing that was interesting is that the i'm just reading this off mark's website you can look up the um benefits of chrome chalcedon chalcedony yourself but it's very good for helping to restore calm um helping with anxiety disorders uh bringing stillness and inner peace but this was the bit that really got me at the time because a lot of a lot of people that come down with COVID, I personally believe, and I'm going to talk about this in the post-viral video as well, is it's linked into overwhelm. Okay, it's overwhelm. And this crystal is particularly good for parents and grandparents who struggle with their families. Now, that doesn't mean it's like, I hate my family. I love my family. I adore my family. I live for my family. But anybody who's got a family, and into that we will also add, you know, parents and all the rest of it, the responsibility is enormous. The duties are, are enormous, particularly what they call the sandwich generation, which is people like me who had their children older. My first child I had when I was 35. I think I had my second one when I was 39. So I'm an older parent. And when you do that, you then also get older. You, you are an older parent and then you have older parents to also look after as well as children and teenagers. It's a very, very heady mix. Uh, into that also add a career and a lot of people get overwhelmed. So that really spoke to me, this particular crystal. Um, and I wore it, I've worn it pretty much every day. Um, so thank you, Mark, for that. You're a real sweetheart and um, I appreciated your, uh, your love. So, um, yeah. The other thing that was going through my mind with all of this was what does illness, any illness, teach us? Whenever we get run down, whenever we are unwell, there is always a reason why and there's always a lesson in it. I firmly believe that. And for me, I can't talk for all of you, but I think, again, this is something that's going to resonate with many of you. It was bringing up addiction. To me, the addiction that's always been running through my life is workaholism. OK, I've always been a workaholic. And it was interesting when I my dad, bless him, actually rang me to see how I was and the first thing he said to me was, he said, do not go back to work too quickly. And actually, I'm sorry, Dad, I'm probably back two days earlier than he wanted me to be because he wanted me to give myself two weeks off. Although I'm not racing back to uh, the daily stuff. Um, but the other thing he and it reminded me of when I was um, oh, a very young girl, eight or nine. He would come into my bedroom at about half ten, ten o'clock at night. And he would say, stop working, Amanda. I would be doing my homework. And it was like, I'm turning the light off. Close your books. Stop it. And then roll forward. I'm 55 this year. And it's like my father's telling me the same thing. Stop working. Stop it. And he's only saying it because he's the, he was the same. OK, it's like it's, this is the thing with addictions. They run in families. So for me, this was part of the healing process and it isn't complete by any stretch of the imagination. It's a work in progress. So illness will bring up what is out of balance, work life balance. You know, you're gonna, you do need to address that coming down with it a day before Mother's Day. It's all about receiving. Yes, I think there's a very clear piece of guidance there. Um, and two interesting things tied into workaholism. Um, Shane warns energy came to me 
Um, I may very well channel him at some point in the future. Um, I said that shortly after he died. I felt it quite strongly, but out of respect for his family, I wouldn't go there at the moment. But one thing I did read about Shane Warne was that um, the holiday that he went on was supposed to be like a recharge holiday. Um, and he had said to a friend that actually he wanted to take a year off. He just needed a year off. And the friend said to him something along the lines of, you can have three months off because if you have any longer than that, people will just forget who you are. Can you imagine how that friend feels now? Not that it's his fault that Shane died, but can you imagine? Because that's what was coming to me because it's like, he could have taken a year off. He could have taken two years off. People would still have remembered him. There's this thing that we don't allow ourselves permission to stop. Now, of course, that assumes that we've got financial security. I realise most people can't just take a year off. But you can get a more balanced life, OK? You don't have to keep working and working and working. Um, sense of humour is important and being able to, even though you're aware of what is coming up to be healed, you need to have a sense of humour with yourself when you realise that you're really struggling and are not doing very well at the lesson. And I think it was day two or three, I was feeling really rough. I was in bed. I had a banging headache, had aches everywhere. Uh, I had a temperature as well. I wasn't feeling good at all. I wasn't worried, but I just wasn't feeling good. So I took myself off to bed. But it was the just after Taylor Hawkins had died. Now, those of you that watch me regularly know that I do the Heart Squad videos. I've looked at Chris Cornell. I've looked at Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain's energy was around me just before Taylor Hawkins died. I knew something was going on. I didn't know why Kurt was around. And I feel as though Kurt was around because he knew that Taylor was about to die. Anyway, so I'm lying in bed and I've got all this information coming in about Taylor Hawkins. And I'm wanting to do a video because it's time sensitive. He's died. Uh, I'm getting this information coming through, which is that it was not what it appeared to be. Um, it was not just a straight drugs overdose. There was other energies at play. I'm not even going to go into what it is now. Why I'm telling you is that I thought, this is the workaholic thing. It's like, I thought, well, obviously I can't go on camera. I look terrible. I feel terrible. No one wants to see me like this. And equally, my clients are going to tell me off because they know I'm unwell. So this is the workaholic. I thought, I'll make an audio recording. I'm lying in bed. My, my phone's like this. And I'm just speaking into the phone, all of this stuff that's flowing through, coughing and spluttering. And then I got 10 minutes into it and I thought, what the hell are you doing, Amanda? What the hell are you doing? Nobody wants to hear that. And if they do, you know, well, it's totally dysfunctional anyway. Just stop it. And that was the moment. It's a bit like the addict that realises, actually, this is, this is completely and utterly bonkers and ridiculous. And I need to stop. I need to not have the next fix. Taylor Hawkins is going to have to wait. Taylor Hawkins might have to wait three months before I bring him through. Taylor Hawkins might have to wait six months before I bring him through. It doesn't matter today. Because this is the thing with when you work with spirit, they forget what it is to be in a physical body. I'm not talking about Taylor Hawkins. I'm talking about spirit generally. There's always something that's urgent. There's always a piece of guidance that wants to come through. The veils are very thin at the moment. And this is the other thing. Sometimes you have to say to spirit, back off, back off. I'm off duty. I'm not working. Me and Metatron have a very good understanding and he knows when I do that and he totally respects it. But some other guides, particularly ones that I haven't maybe worked with much before, they don't know my rules. And maybe that sounds weird to you, but it shouldn't be because working with spirit is a two way street. OK, so they need to understand how you want to work with them in the same way that you need to understand it from the other perspective as well. So telling spirit to back off is very needed when you've got stuff that just wants to keep pouring through. Um, OK, I'm not going to go on for too much longer. Uh, these are just a few other things that I would like to say, though, in this video. Um, so for me, um, COVID was an opportunity to get it out of the way because I knew I was going to get it at some point. 
Um, very much also front of mind was the thing about, okay, let your immune system now do what it's meant to do, okay? Let it go into the gym, <laughs> effectively, you know? See your immune system a bit like as being in the gym. And it needs to do its dumbbells, you know? It needs to go on the treadmill. It needs to do, it needs to have a workout, basically. That's what viruses do. They give your immune system a workout. The worst thing you can do is put yourself in a clinical bubble and never touch dirt or be exposed to any germ. And then it's just redundant. It gets lazy. So actually a germ, a virus coming into the body is an opportunity for your immune system to sort of like wake up. Hold on a minute. We've got a, we've got an invader germ here. You know, let's create the temperature to fight it off. Let's do whatever we need to do to get the body back into balance. Um, it's an interesting thing about temperature as well. I'm not going to give any medical advice because I'm not a doctor. And I'll just say that at the outset. But it did take me back to when my daughters were babies. And I remember having so many arguments with my husband and he was actually correct, which is, really pisses me off when he is correct like that. But <laughs> it's the thing about um, when kids, but equally us, when, when you get a temperature, it's actually a sign that the body is fighting the infection. And then when you try and reduce the temperature... What you do is you you thwart that process, that natural process of the body fighting the infection. You know, if you've got an ill child and their temperature's going sky high, I was always the first with the cowpole. I have to be honest. It's like, let's bring the temperature down. This is where the arguments came from. My husband was just, let, it, let them, let them, let, let it just happen. Let it happen, Amanda. I didn't trust their immune systems to be able to do it. As I say, I'm not giving medical advice. And when my temperature was going quite high, I did take some tablets because it was uncomfortable. But again, that whole energy of like, I also realized I needed to allow it to a degree because it was a sign my body was fighting the infection. It was the immune system was having its workout. There was also this thing very strongly about trust your body, trust your body. You know, you wouldn't have come, I don't want to get into the whole jab thing, but you wouldn't have come this far two years in in the face of most people doing what they did, to now be thinking, oh my God, why didn't I do it? There was no part of me that regretted my decision. Actually, it was more a case of, okay, let's see now what your immune system can do. I'm not, I don't have any underlying health conditions other than high blood pressure. Uh, I, you know, I'm fairly fit and healthy from, I am fairly fit and healthy, so I wasn't at all concerned about it. Let your body do what it knows it can do. Trust your body. It took me very much back also to the days of giving birth. You know, the thing about um, to have an easy birth, you need to really be in the space of trusting your body, that your body knows how to give birth. Get out of the way of that. Fear comes up and then everything closes down and, you know, gets gets smaller. Um so just allow that process. Um, surrender. Let me just have some water in a minute. Surrender to the slowdown. Do less. Do less needs to be a mantra that we all have stuck on our foreheads, I think. Let me just take my tablets. This is zinc. The other one was um, D2. And this is spirulina. Just my thing. Um, do less, do less, do less. We live in a society. Again, this goes back to the early teachings of Metatron two years ago with regard to what are the lessons from this pandemic? What is it trying to teach us? And it was to do with doing less. Calming society down. I don't think we've learnt the lesson at all. I'm not sure I learnt the lesson. So it came and whacked me over the head big time. And this will lead us into the post-viral video that I would like to do. Um, I am going to be doing less. Um, doesn't mean I'm going to be disappearing, but I am going to be doing less. Um, into that comes things such as boundaries and being able to say no. Um, I also think it's very important that when you're unwell, people are given space to be unwell. And again, I don't want to upset anybody here because I really appreciated your love and your good wishes. And uh, I have many mes messages and thank you very much for them. But there's a fine line between sending somebody good wishes because they're unwell, which is just like, I'm thinking of you. That's lovely. To, how are you? 
how are you? And there were a few people that, um, one in particular who called every single day. And it's like, I don't want to speak to you. I don't want to be asked, how am I? I'm recovering. I am regaining my strength. I still am regaining my strength. It's actually exhausting carrying on telling people how you are. Because again, the teaching of Metatron is we need to let the story go. If you keep going on and on about how unwell you feel, actually you start to reinforce it. So it's, it's a really fine line. You need to give people space when they're unwell. And I think the best thing we can do is to basically send people a message, um, which is like, I'm thinking of you. Hope, I'm thinking of you. That's all that needs to be said. Rather than the texts, the phone calls, like, how are you? I know it's always often done with the best of intentions, but it's this thing about giving people space, allowing people time off. And I think sometimes the ones that can be the most needy in terms of needing to know how you are, I really need to know today, the update, it's actually a reflection of what's going on within them. We are all mirrors to each other. And so when somebody takes time off and disappears, it can send other people into a bit of like, oh, but you know, what do I now do? Well, actually, maybe you also slow down a bit. Maybe you also do a bit less, but I can't do that. And I'm saying that with love and sympathy because I totally get it. Back to my story about Taylor Hawkins and like <coughs> croaking into the, in, into, the, into the phone. Who wants to hear that? For God's sake. It's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. It's a symptom of finding it hard to stop. But it is only when you stop that you realise quite how much you needed to. And the guidance would be give yourself that time and then a bit more which is why next week I'm not rushing back to the daily videos or anything like that. I got some big deadlines that, you know, are now getting near to overdue. They're going to take priority. Everything else can wait. Okay, so um, giving people space. Um, boundaries, I've mentioned that. Um, when you send healing to people, you should always ask whether it's okay. This is a general rule of thumb. And again, it's something I've maybe been guilty with in the, of in the past as well, which is when we're healers and we generally, genuinely care about somebody, we will send healing. But you should only really ever sh send healing if it's been requested or asked for. Basically, that you have permission. So, I mean, somebody like me who gets maybe sent a lot of stuff, you know, even on days when I'm not, unwell you know I'm talking here also about things like psychic attack and stuff like that you just know if you're sort of out there on social media then you're going to receive lots of energy from people of all sorts of description so I always have what Metatron is calling a firewall up okay you know on, comp on computers there is a firewall to keep viruses out well actually you, we should all have a firewall around us to keep out other people's energies that we haven't actually asked for because the thing is, you might be a great healer, but your healing might not be compatible with my body. It might not be what I particularly need at the moment. It might not be what I particularly resonate with at this time. OK, you might be working with a guide that isn't particularly compatible with my belief system, as an example. OK, so you should always ask. It's really important to ask. Um, so also when you're unwell, put up the firewall around you giving permission very much like you do on a computer you give permission on your computer for certain things to come in for cookies for example to either be disabled or enabled on your computer it's exactly the same with the energetic body and your space you need to own the space around your body as well so it's very much linked into saying i receive the healing that is right for me um, and that it is sent with the right intention and that I actually need and anything else thank you very much but return to sender nothing gets wasted it can go to somebody else but you know take ownership of that which is being sent to you okay you don't have to receive anything that you don't wish to receive the other interesting thing I've written down here is with regard to energy again and boundaries and this ties into social media um, for all of us. If you're watching me now, you're on social media, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, any of the other places. We don't fully appreciate um, the, the leakage 
um, of our energy that comes from being visible. Um, and we take, all of us do, we take a little bit of this, we take a little bit of that, we take a bit of that person's energy. It's fine to a degree, we all do it. Um, but realise that that is what's happening. Metatron was showing me or reminding me of, and I've mentioned this before, in indigenous cultures, there are certain indigenous, speak, indigenous tribes who don't like to have their photograph taken, okay? Um, and it's because they believe that, you know, the photograph effectively takes a little bit of your spirit or your soul or something like that. I would go, I wouldn't go that far, but I would say that I'm aware that there are fractals that can get split off. That, and it's fine if you're consciously aware that it's happening. But when you are depleted, when you are unwell, when you're just needing time off, when you don't want to do it, it's okay to go offline. It's very important, actually, to go offline and have what Metatron is saying are digital holidays. Digital holidays, okay? Uh, that's a nice, nice expression. Digital holidays, um, whereby it's... <sighs> He's just shown me this, it's like a siphon. It's like the, you can't, who you are today, you know, if I make a video on Monday the 11th of April, you can take some of that energy that I'm giving out on that particular day because it's of that day. Um, it's a bit different when you look back at historical photographs or historical pieces of film. It's almost like they're set in a certain period of time. Um, but when it's live, I mean, particularly live streams, live streams or it's of the day and you're feed, you, you literally you're allowing people to feed from it. Be aware of it. It's not a problem as long as you're aware of it and you've got the energy to give. If you haven't, go offline. Applies to all of us. Um, OK, there's something else there that I wanted to say, but it's gone out of my head now. Um, I will show this beautiful card. Um, there were a few cards that I pulled. And there's a couple here that I wanted to show you. <laughs> this one came up. Surprise, surprise. Going back to what I was saying at the beginning of the uh, video. <coughs> Vegetarian, vegan. It's an old Doreen Virtue card. Um, but because I've been very immersed in the energy of Carly, I pulled a card from Alana Fairchild's deck. This was the other thing that COVID and, and Carly walking it through me, walking, well, interestingly, walking through me, being with me through the whole experience was that because she has a very, um, she's got a very, well, how do I say it? Just a magnitude of different types of energies to form the Carly energy. But there is this bloodthirsty, you know, warrior type energy, which has to be addressed. It can't be ignored. But also there's a softer side. It's as though I really got to know all parts of her and understood her better. But the card that came out for me, for her, was this one. It's such a beautiful card, this. It's card number 29, Devi Makali. And it shows the baby and the baby is us. The baby was me. And it's being held in her hand. And the words are just beautiful. I'll just read this first little bit. It says, endlessly loving, infinitely forgiving she will never turn away from you no matter what you have done no matter how many mistakes you have made she is here for you always feel the safety and sanctuary of her divine hugs she is your soft place to fall that really spoke to me she is your soft place to fall and your kindest and most enthusiastic advocate let her shift your experience away from endless tasks and ever greater expectations into sweet relief and comforting connection. How beautiful is that? She is your soft place to fall. Let her energy shift your experience away from endless tasks and ever greater expectations into sweet relief and comforting connection. That spoke to me so, so much. And in fact, this whole... You know, those of you that have been with me a while, I've been talking about this wave from east to west. 
and I'm understanding better now. I'll do a video just on this of what the hell it is because to me, I think it is these Eastern energies. And I um, read something the last couple of days, which, let me just get it up. Um, Yogananda wrote in Autobiography of a Yogi and he says this, he says, in the divine plan, Christ was responsible for the evolution of the West and Krishna for that of the East. It was intended that the West specialise in developing objectivity through logic and reason and that the East specialised in inner intuitive development. But in the cosmic plan, the time has now come to combine these two lines into one. East and West must unite. Um, yeah, so Yogananda told us, Jesus said, my followers have forgotten the art of divine inner communion. Outwardly, they do good works, but they have lost sight of the most important of my teachings to seek the kingdom of God first. There's definitely something coming through with all of these Eastern deities, beings. Um, this is the this is the way from East to West. So we've got Kali. She's coming. I'm going to be bringing through some teaching on Kali. Uh, we have Ganesh. Beautiful Ganesh statue there. We have Ganesh. Uh, Krishna. Shiva. Um, we've already got Kuan Yin. Um, it's all happening, guys. It's all happening. So also just quickly in terms of colours, I'm nearly finished and I just want to say something on colours and crystals. Um, the colours that were getting me through that I found particularly helpful were the greens. Greens, greens, greens. Um, when I was unwell anyway. Now that I'm post-viral and I'm still getting my strength back, it's the reds, which is probably obvious because red is all about give me the energy back. I need my energy back. I need to, you know, I need it to keep climbing. So the Kali energy is going to be very good for that. But certainly when I was feeling unwell, it was the greens. Any of my green sprays would have helped. Um, I used the Emerald Renewal and Recovery. In fact, post-viral, this will be a great spray to use. Emerald Renewal and Recovery. Let's just have a bit of that. It's got Vetiver in it, which is very grounding. Oh, it's my favourite spray, actually. Of all the sprays that we do, Emerald has always been my favourite spray. I just love it. I love it. <laughs> it's so... Oh, I don't know. It's just... Oh, it's brilliant. Um, I also use Quan Yin. Okay. Uh, Quan Yin as uh, a, a healer. It strikes me as well that within the set of sprays that I create with Tracy and the team, um, we've now, we're gonna have three mothers. We've got three mother energies. We've got Mother Mary, we've got Quan Yin, who is known as the Mother Mary of the East. It's one of her taglines. Um, and then we've got Kali Ma, who again is this, a different type of mother, like a lioness, a warrior energy. Um, and also I want to bring something through linked into the Kali energy, going back to slaying demons, the bloodthirsty stuff. Look at the state of the world. Look at the darkness. Look at the evil that we have on this world. Do you not think that sometimes a being that is capable of actually being down in the... Camera overheated at that moment. How interesting. It's basically what I was trying to say, that um, <clears throat> when we are faced with such darkness and evil in our world, and let's call it for what it is, demons, <clears throat> you need the demon slayer to come in. So the Kali energy is just very needed at this time in our world, and she is able to help clear the darkness, and we need that. Um, but equally, she is this soft landing place. Anyway, this is for another day. I am getting a bit tired now. My throat's going. So let's just finish off. Anything else that wants to be said in this video? <coughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, another thing that really struck me when I was unwell. Um, again, I'm not judging it. I would probably have been the first to have done it. Is certain stories in the news um, that we get distracted by. Um, <clears throat> that we leak our energy, our energy gets leaked 
through giving too much time and attention to things that truly don't actually matter in our individual lives. And uh, yeah, the whole Will Smith thing. I mean, literally, I'm not even going to accept comments on this because it's it's such an energy drain. It's just a really good example of it. You can have an opinion about it. You can express that opinion. Then just walk away and let it go. It is completely and utterly pointless getting into arguments online about, about stuff like that that does not impact your life in any shape or matter. Um, you know, the day you die, it's not going to be, you know, and I was right about Will Smith. Honestly, it's got to that point where we have to, we have to see our behaviour. A bit like me with my phone with Taylor Hawkins. It's like, let it go. Let so much of this stuff go um, that just does not actually concern your development, your development, your healing, your happiness, your time on this earth. OK, um, I'm just holding on here to this uh, crystal, dropping it now. This was another crystal that I was using quite a bit. Um, I just felt very cool to use it and it's Shiva Lingam. So again, there's a nod to the east because these stones tend to be from the uh, river Ganges in India uh, and its tributaries. Um, it's good for, um, I'm just reading here from a book, it says it's good for back pain, interestingly. And that's what I was experiencing, a lot of p muscle pain, back pain. Um, uh, good for a spiritual detox um, as well. Helps to connect physical and spiritual energy and enhances male energy. That's interesting because it's found in water, which is female. So I don't think that's completely correct. I think it's both male and female. Um, but also very good for body fluids, um, prostate gland in men, fertility, spine, uh, etc. Menopause even. I mean, this is the other thing with regard to post-viral tiredness. Some of us are going through things such as menopause, which makes you tired anyway. This whole thing about, well, like, yeah, I'm tired post-viral. I was tired before I got unwell. <laughs> okay. So again, you have to give yourself, your the body, the time that it needs to heal. If it's not menopause, it could be that you've been looking after, you know, a sick child for years, you know, or you've had some relentless problem for years. Maybe you've got terrible money problems or something. It grinds you down. It wears you down. The whole world is tired is what I said in my community post. And I really feel that we're tired for all sorts of reasons. Burnout is very real. So when illness and a virus comes in it's there to teach you something and the most important thing it's trying to say is slow down look after yourself pace yourself put your boundaries in place and put yourself number one for first you know the number of people that maybe want something from you but it's for their advantage it's not for your advantage you know start to see that okay i think that's pretty much what i've got written down so um, I think I'll just end with um, a spray of the green and I'm also going to pull a tree card for us and a Metatron card. Those are the two decks that I want us to use. So let's just, we've had the emerald, a bit more emerald. I'll get enough of that and a bit of Quan Yin as well. The Kali spray is coming quite soon, a couple of weeks hopefully, after Easter. Okay, that's Quan Yin. And she brings in the energy of mercy and compassion. Very soft energy. Very beautiful. Okay, let's have a tree. <laughs> let's have a tree. What tree wishes to speak? I've missed the trees. I haven't actually been out of the house apart from once in about 10 days. So I need to get out this weekend just into nature. We've got sycamore, card number 29. Two and nine make 11. The sycamore tree. I don't know whether it's intended to be. I'll put the picture up again in a moment. But that reminds me very much of the goddess Diana as well. Um, she is standing there underneath the moon with a 
arrow or bow. Uh, okay, sycamore. The sycamore's birthplace is the mountains. But like many of the maple family, it has been planted in lowlands all over the world for its decorative value. Um, the sycamore is always ready to boost our spiritual clarity whenever we encounter it. It helps us develop our ability to look ahead. We become less biased and are able to see when conditions are right. Clarity of thought and good powers of concentration help us learn. Um, with this new spiritual freedom, ideas and plans come to us effortlessly. Our self-confidence grows. Um, sycamore connects the elements of air and earth. So putting ideas into practice. Enjoy being calm and cool-headed. Be astute but without splitting hairs. Um, so there's a little saying that goes with sycamore and it says precision of the eagle, clarity of the blue skies power of lightning, breath of the winds, the presence of your spirit gathers near and far, within and without. Okay, that feels a beautiful feminine energy. Um, and let's just pull one final card from the Metatron deck. I feel as though there's one card in here, just wanting to say something. Let's just end with the card here. Okay, that one. Right. <laughs> as above, so below, but we've also got signs from spirit. Look out for the signs from spirit. Um, spirit is all around us and is always talking to us. And uh, we have the robin there. It's so like a nod to the ancestors as well. I felt the ancestors very close. Um, one of the things, again, the virus was bringing up for me was a lot of childhood stuff. And um, I called on my grandmother and I felt her very close around me and um, released a few little tears as well, linked into that. And um, often when you see a robin, it's a sign that somebody around you, there's somebody that you've lost and loved, but is still there coming in to say hello. And you know, we're coming into Easter week as well, so the signs probably should be increasing, but again, don't push it. Um, it's a strange run into Easter week this week. I don't know, it's just because I've been a little bit unwell, but, um, I'm not feeling the energy yet, <laughs> uh, which is really interesting. Um, I'm not feeling the Easter energy yet, but, you know, I'm sure it will come. Um, but again, it's this thing about not forcing anything, not forcing it. Um, going at your own pace. Let's just pull a card on Easter, shall we? It's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, what deck would I use for that, though? Uh, the f let's just get the field tarot. I just want to pull one card for Easter and then I'll be back at some point. I'll do a, another reading closer to Easter with Jesus' energy. Easter energy. This year, 2022. Three of discs, it's in the works. <laughs> I like that. That's what I'm hearing. It's in the works. It's in the works. Don't worry. We've got the Ace of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Love is in the works. Don't worry. Love is in the works. Jesus is in the works. Easter will happen. The Easter energy will, will be here. There will be a, an uprising of love. Um... Yeah, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for all of your love and your good wishes. And I hope that this video has helped. It's gone a little bit, you know, into different areas, but um, it's just been a bit of an update. And um, I will be back at some point soon. But um, please just give me a little bit more time on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not quite ready to get back to that yet. OK, lots of love. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye for now. Bye.